Mr. Speaker, the um, epidemiological data shared with us by the Deputy Speaker, I beg your pardon, by the Deputy Leader, is actually quite frightening. In a country of 30 million people, to have 3 to 4.6 million people who are hepatitis B positive is scary. If you break it down into a room of 30 people, that means three people in that room, based on the figures, are hep B positive, and that's frightening. It changes the conversation with regards to even issues as almost distant as safe sex and the use of barrier contraception, which is not only to prevent pregnancy and HIV, but hep B as well. Mr. Speaker, really important points raised by the, the, uh, the, the maker of the statement in that the, um, the fact that we have such a high number of persons who are hep B positive in Ghana is a fact that we are not having enough awareness creation being done. And at a time like this, a, um, a collaboration between the National Commission on Civic Education and the Ghana Health Service and perhaps the Ghana Education Service would be of benefit because we have a youthful population and a lot of the Hep B positive persons fall within the youthful demographic. And incidentally, HIV is also on the increase. And so you're having some of the cases where a lot of people who are Hep B positive are also HIV positive. Mr. Speaker, affordable treatment is key. Cuba, for example, uses the interferon alpha as a means of treatment for the Hep B virus. This is very effective, but it's also extremely expensive. And therefore, the affordability of treatment is important, given the fact that we don't want to have a situation where access to good health care or to proper treatment and management of the disease are limited only to people within a particular socioeconomic bracket. Mr. Speaker, another incidental finding so far has been that a lot of persons who have been found to be Hep B positive are from the northern part of Ghana, and a lot of research must be done to find out the reasons why in order to be able to target screening and treatment of Hep B in those who have been found positive in various populations. And then finally, Mr. Speaker, there must be clarity with regards to policy on what we are doing about hepatitis B in Ghana. First of all, we must look at a free national health screening program which targets populations that are found to be high risk but make it available and free and easily accessible to all persons in the population. And based on the data found regarding the screening and the distribution of the disease, then we can also have a look at a vaccination program targeting the high-risk groups in order to ensure that people can actually be protected in anticipation of the kind of infections and the, the rates at which people are getting infected. So based on the data, we can then um, come up with a determination on whether vaccinations should be targeted at people in secondary school or after they finish secondary school or whether we are looking at specific age groups that will be targeted with regards to vaccinations. And then, of course, finally, Mr. Speaker, for the Hep B um, treatment, the immunoglobulin, to be put on the NHIS card to make sure that persons who are affected can avail of the treatment. This is so important, Mr. Speaker. The, the statistics are staggering, are frightening, and this is a matter that must be taken with absolute emergency and urgency for a country that is seeking to provide good health care and access to all its citizens. Mr. Speaker, I would like to reiterate and add my voice to the um, appeal by the Deputy Majority Speaker that the immunoglobulin used in the treatment for hepatitis B be put on the NHIS card and a free and accessible vaccination program be put in place in order to protect those in the population who are HM, Hep B negative at the moment.